Hi, I'm Jim Minter, Director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, and with me today is my Associate Director for the Center, Dr. Michael Langemeyer, who's also a Professor of Ag Economics here at Purdue. We've been getting a lot of questions about USDA's ARC-IC program and whether or not it's a good fit on people's individual farming operations. So we wanted to provide some clarity to how that program works and help you identify situations when it might be beneficial for you to enroll in the program. So let's start by talking about what some of the details are. Uh, first of all, you make your choice with respect to each individual FSA farm, and that's going to be for the 2019 and 2020 program years. Um, an ARC IC payment occurs when an FSA farm number's crop revenue falls below the ARC IC revenue guarantee for a crop year. That ARC IC guarantee is 86% of the ARC IC benchmark revenue for that individual farm. Coverage uh, payments are effectively capped at 10% of benchmark revenue. Uh, and the ARC IC benchmark revenue is based on the Olympic average of revenues for the preceding five years. Uh, based on that farm's actual data. Uh, revenues are calculated using the higher of the marketing year average crop prices or the effective price, which is sometimes referred to as the PLC price, and proven yields. And finally, one of the big differences between the ARC IC program and the ARC County program, aside from the fact that it's based on your individual farm records, is the fact that payment is made on 65% of the base acres not 85% of the base acres, which is the computation used in the ARC County program. Let's talk a little bit about the ARC IC program factors. First of all, only enrolled farms are included in revenue calculations. Uh, payments are dependent on planting of covered commodities on those enrolled farms. Uh, you have to have historic and yearly yield reports uh, to do the ARC IC program or participate in the ARC IC program. And finally, benchmark revenues, guarantees, actual revenues, and payment rates are calculated at the individual farm level, and then they're weighted by the producer's share of the covered commodities planted on all farms enrolled in ARC IC within the state. And I want to emphasize that. Uh, that's a point that I think that's been somewhat confusing. So if you enroll a single farm in ARC IC, uh, that's not a big deal in terms of doing the computations. But if you have multiple farms, even if they're across counties, when the calculations are done to determine whether or not a payment is going to occur, they're going to do a weighted average across all of the ARC IC farms that you have enrolled within a particular state. So, Michael, I think the best way to really understand the program is to think about some examples. And you've worked through some numbers here, so let's, let's walk through the examples. Yes, Jim, I think that's definitely the case. And what we've done here is we've got, a, uh, we've got some examples based on Huntington County, Indiana, where there was quite a bit of a prevent plan. Uh, we assumed that the FSA farm yield history equaled the RMA county averages for each year. As Jim indicated, you would use your actual FSA farm yields uh, for the ARC individual program. We also assumed that corn was planted in 2013, 2015, and 2017. Uh, soybeans, in other words, were planted in 2014 and 2016. That's important because the ARC IC uses a simple average of, of the planted crops uh, from 2013 to 2017. The Farms Olympic average corn yield was 182, um, and so that's based on the farm's yields from 2013 to 2017. Uh, we used a marketing year average price of 385 uh, in 2019. And so with those assumptions, we examined three scenarios. And so think of this as a, an example FSA farm under three different scenarios. So never, scenario number one, uh, which gets talked about a lot, Jim, uh, is a 100% pre prevent plant in 2019. That one's really easy to investigate. And then we go to scenario number two and number three, which are a little more difficult. Uh, number two, we have less than 100% prevent plant, so we planted some of the acreage to corn in this example. And the scenario number three, we planted the entire farm to corn, uh, but the 2019 crop yields were below average. All right, so I think what a lot of people are interested in are the details in terms of how the possible payments we would be collected. But I think the first thing to say, Michael, is when you think about the ARC IC program it's, and whether or not it fits you, it's really all about whether or not you're going to generate a substantial payment for 2019. And that's what we're going to focus on. The underlying assumption is that you're not likely to collect a payment for the 2020 crop year, but there's the potential for some relatively large payments in the 2019 crop year. So let's look at those examples again, and let's look at scenario one. So scenario number one, 100% prevent plant in 2019. This was, this was prevent plant for corn. 
Uh, so the Arc IC benchmark revenue for this farm was $674. Uh, the Arc IC benchmark guarantee is 674 times 86% or $580. Uh, the actual revenue was zero because it was prevent plant, um, and this this is sometimes called the prevent plant exception, and so uh, and so that means the the actual revenue was zero. Uh, if you take the the arc individual guarantee of five hundred eighty dollars minus zero and then multiply it by sixty five percent, I remember Jim said that was sixty five percent of of the base acres. The payment was based on sixty five percent of the base acres. That's a very large number. Uh, and so the cap is reached in this case. We've got the calculation of the cap here on the screen. Uh, it's, it's the benchmark revenue times 65% times 10%. So in this case, the cap is $44 per acre. Yeah, so that's, that's a scenario where clearly ARC IC would be beneficial. Um, we didn't include it in this particular recording, but we looked at our county payments or possible our county payments that's going to swamp any possible uh, our county payment and from that standpoint would likely be the most advantageous program choice for this particular farm. Yes, it, it's going to swamp. I mean, we, given, given that the, our marketing year average price is 385 it would take some very low prices from here into September uh, to bring that down to the PLC price of 370 And so in this particular case, uh, that $44 is going to swamp uh, any payment from PLC or our county. Yeah, good point. So let's look at scenario two, and this is a, maybe a little more common, it kind of depends on your area. We assume a 50% uh, of the particular farm is in the prevented planting program in 2019, but 50% of the farm was planted to corn. And so we have, we're assuming a 2019 yield of 161 on the acres that were planted to corn. That is substantially below the Olympic average, and so we did estimate that 2019 yield. That yield is not known yet. Uh, and so based on some uh, relationship between Northeast Indiana uh, projected yield and uh, 2000, in 2018, 2019, uh, we came up with that estimate. So just make a note that it, it is an estimated yield. Uh, so using those numbers, the ARC individual benchmark revenue is $674. Uh, the benchmark revenue is 580. Benchmark guarantee. Our, our, yeah, the benchmark guarantee is 580, excuse me. Uh, that was 674 times the 86%. Uh, the actual revenue in this case is calculated using just the planted acres. Let me repeat that. This is very important in this scenario, which will, will be very common for folks across Indiana and the Corn Belt. Uh, the, the, the actual revenue is computed using just the planted acres. That's why the actual 2019 revenue using that 385 marketing year average price is $620. Obviously, the actual revenue is greater than the benchmark revenue revenue uh, guarantee or the benchmark guarantee and so the ARC individual payment is zero dollars in this case. So to be clear on that, on the prevent plan on this farm didn't really come into the computations. The determination of what the ARC IC actual revenue was was 100 percent determined by the acres that was actually planted to corn. And don't don't get hung up on the 50 percent prevent plant here. It could be anything from 1 percent to 99 percent and, and as long as the yield was, two, was 161 for the planted corn, uh, the result would have been identical. Yeah, good point. All right, let's look at scenario three, where we plant all the farm, but the yields simply weren't very good. And we've got several scenarios up that we're gonna look at. Yeah, so actually here we've got several different yields. And so think of these as, as potentially different, uh, di different uh, yield scenarios, if you will. Uh, so 100% uh, of the acres were planted to corn. Uh, and and the, the, first, the first assumption here, a yield of 150, uh, that's 18% below the Olympic average. So uh, considerably below the Olympic average, that wasn't big enough to trigger much of an ARC individual uh, uh, payment. Uh, the payment uh, in that scenario would only be $1. Uh, if the yield was 140 uh, on this farm, uh, which is 23% below the Olympic average, then we'd be start to get a pretty sizable ARC individual payment, uh, in this case, $26. Uh, once the yield got to 130, which is about 30% below the Olympic average, uh, the ARC individual payment reaches that cap of $44. And so, Jim, we've been using a rule of thumb. Uh, once you get above 25%, get closer to that 30%, uh, lower, yields, uh, lower yields compared to the Olympic average, uh, you reach the cap. Yeah, and I think the other thing to th keep in mind, and you can see this from that slide, if you get around 20% below, that's when you need to start looking at this. So. Let's kind of summarize this a little bit. There's one other scenario, though, that we have been posed uh, questions from some producers, and I think it's a very interesting one. You've, we've labeled it here food for thought. 
What if we were to enroll both a Scenario 1 and Scenario 3 that we've talked about on, on the previously in the ARC-IC program? So Scenario 1, remember, uh, was 100% prevent plant. Uh, Farm 3 was the one where we had the low crop yields. Let's walk through that example and walk through the numbers, Michael. So uh, let's assume that this uh, Farm number 1 or Scenario number 1 had 80 acres and scenario number three or farm number three had 40 acres. Uh, why is that important? Uh, well, uh, as, as Jim indicated earlier, ARC Individual is based on all the farms enrolled in ARC Individual. And so, and so we need the, the, uh, the relative acreage is very important uh, when you calculate that weighted average. So that why, that's why that information is important. Uh, farm number one or scenario number one, we summarized that earlier. Uh, that was an actual revenue of zero dollars. Uh, similarly, uh, we uh, summarized scenario number three under an assumed yield of 150 bushels per acre. We didn't show you the actual revenue uh, in, in the previous slide, but the actual revenue uh, would be $578. Uh, what we want to do next is when we look at a weighted average of the actual revenue, so both of these, assuming that both of these farms are going to be enrolled in the ARC individual, and so we take two-thirds, uh, 80 divided by 120, which is the total acres, times zero, that was the 100% prevent plant farm, uh, 40 divided by 120, uh, multiplied by 578, the actual revenue, and that gives us an, a weighted average actual revenue of $193. Obviously, that is an extremely low uh, revenue. When we compare that to a revenue guarantee that would be calculated using both of, the, both of these farms, uh, we, we, we would see uh, that we're going to have a, a payment uh, that, that's at the max, that, that, that's at the 10% cap. And I think looking at that scenario, or really two scenarios here combined, you can see there's lots of different possibilities. And so if you're in this scenario of uh, or situation where you've got some farms that were enrolled in Prevent Plant last year, some other farms that might have even average yields in some scenarios uh, would fit. Uh, we do use an example here where the yield fell below average, but really you can just kind of walk through the math and do the computations and figure out uh, approximately how large that payment might be for 2019. And if it's somewhere close to the cap, or at least uh, maybe somewhere uh, not too far away from the cap, uh, that's a situation where enrolling multiple farms in the ARC IC program would be beneficial. And so uh, we can't make a blanket recommendation with respect to doing that. When you get into this scenario or this situation, you're going to have to do the computations yourself uh, and actually try and figure that out. But there's going to be some situations here uh, throughout the Corn Belt, really, where this is going to be applicable. And there's two factors that are critical uh, to making this work. Uh, one is having at least one of the FSA farms be a 100% prevent plant. I think that's critical. You can have multiple farms with low yields and you, and you, and you get a similar result, but I think uh, it really helps uh, the, the, it really helps uh, get a fairly large payment if, if one or more farms are 100% prevent plant. And the other factor that's important is how many acres does that represent uh, in, uh, in relationship to the total amount of acres that you might want to put into ARC Individual. Uh, if you look at the weighted average calculation down there, if your prevent plant farm is relatively small uh, compared to all the acres you want to put in, uh, you can see that that's really going to reduce the advantage of, of combining the farms. But in this case, the prevent plant, plant farm uh, was, was, was uh, twice as large uh, as the other farm, uh, and that's why we, we reached the cap. And so that, those are the two, two critical factors to think about. Do I have any farms? that are 100% prevent plant, and then how many acres uh, are those uh, compared to some other farms I might, might want to combine uh, with the 100% prevent plant farm uh, to enroll an ARC individual. You're right, Michael, the 100% uh, prevent plant does make this a little easier choice, but as you pointed out earlier, it is possible in some scenarios or some situations where the uh, yield reduction yes. was large enough by itself yeah. Uh, to pull uh, yields and revenues yes. down enough that you would and, hit, or and, at least get close to the And one of the scenarios <laughs> that, that we've been, we've been uh, receiving emails and phone calls uh, concerning is probably southeast Indiana. Uh, there's probably some counties down there where some of the farm uh, yields were, were relatively low. And so if you had several FSA farm, farms that had relatively low yields, combining those uh, in, into the ARC individual uh, program would, uh, would be a, a prudent thing to think about at least. All right, let's kind of sum, sum, uh, summarize just a little bit. When should you consider ARC IC? Well, our sample calculations suggest producers with a 20% production loss in 2019 should take the time to evaluate ARC IC. And you could see that for some of our previous calculations. Um, farms with 100% prevented planting in 2019 will receive the per acre payment cap for 2019, 
But I guess I want to emphasize you don't have to have 100% prevented planning for ARC IC to be uh, beneficial. And I think uh, it behooves people to think about some scenarios where uh, if they had substantial yield losses in 2019, uh, it still might be a good fit for them to look at the ARC IC program. Um, the second point is all farms enrolled in, a, in ARC IC and, and within a state will be combined when computing the actual revenue. And I think that wasn't widely understood. We actually were a little bit confused on that ourselves initially. Um, so that's a point of clarification and one you need to think about if you're thinking about enrolling multiple farms in ARC IC. And then the last one is the situation you just worked through, Michael. That was the, in some situations, combining a farm with 100% uh, prevent planting in 2019 with one or more farms with planted acreage could still result in a relatively large 2019 program payment. And uh, again, I want to emphasize that the decision about ARC IC is really focused on how large you think the 2019 payment would be. Uh, operating on the assumption that the 2020 payment would likely be zero. But there's a lot of situations that we've looked at where that 2019 payment is large enough that it would simply dwarf any possible payments coming under the program option, other program options for 2020. And as a result, uh, the ARC IC program becomes the optimal uh, choice. Another factor here, Jim, that we didn't talk about very much, but uh, perhaps it's obvious, but I'm going to go ahead and state the obvious if that's the case. Uh, the reason why this is uh, relatively attractive uh, for the scenarios that we painted here is the potential payments from ARC County and PLC uh, for corn and soybeans are expected to be relatively small both for 19 and 20. And so that's why we're saying, if you can get a big payment for ARC individual in 2019, uh, even if you average a zero payment in 2020, that's still gonna be larger uh, than potential payments in ARC County and PLC. Uh, that's, why there's that, that's why we think there's gonna be more interest in this program, certainly uh, th than there was in 2014 Farm Bill. Yeah, good point. All right, so uh, depending on when you're watching this, you might have an opportunity to attend one of our uh, in-person programs that we're conducting here in Indiana. We've got one coming up on February 5th in Vincennes, Indiana, and one on February 12th in Huntington, Indiana. Uh, so to attend those, just go to our website, purdue.edu slash commercial ag, and you'll see some detailed information about Farm Bill resources, and you can click on that, and you'll have an opportunity to register for one of those workshops. Uh, those workshops do include a free lunch, so that's why we need to collect those registrations and have pre-registrations before the program. That's it for us in terms of uh, summarizing the ARC IC program. On behalf of the Center for Commercial Agriculture and my colleague Michael Langemeyer, I'm Jim Mintert.